I took in the information, but I have no idea where I got it from because everybody was posting it the exact same way. Can you just do it better? How many closings did I get from this video? You know, we've got 11,000 YouTube subscribers. The the Instagram's growing. We've got five videos this year with over 100,000 views. We just go all in on that. So this time you're getting interviewed. How does it feel? Nice. I don't have to think. I think it's easier to be. You know, you've been on some podcasts. Do you prefer to be the interviewer or the interviewee? Um, I think it depends on who I'm talking to. Um, it, if someone's really hard to get a complete answer out of, it is no fun being the interviewer. But mm -hmm. if someone's really comfortable and confident in their subject, it's great being an interviewer. I'd but rather get interviewed. I think it's easier for me to just talk about my experience and knowledge mm -hmm. rather than try and like get yeah. that out of somebody. Well, if you think about it, I mean, the interviewer has to do a bunch of research with a topic they're typically not really familiar with. Mm -hmm. And the interviewer just gets to talk about what they already do. Yes. That's why I'm like, oh, yeah, this will be an this easy one great. for me. Well, um, it's always a pleasure having you on The Real Estate Show, which I tell you is your podcast. It's not. <laughs> it is. Uh, but today, business planning for 2024 for real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a huge group of our audience is real estate professionals. And, you know, you're a business guy. That's, uh, that's what I like to call myself. People like to say you're a video guy, but you are a business guy. Yeah. That video, just knows how to do video and many, many other things yeah, for the sake of your business. Video is just a, a, a means to run a business. Mm -hmm. So I like hearing your thoughts on, you know, I get to talk to you about this quite often, mm -hmm. uh, but nobody else does or very few people mm -hmm. do. So one of the things that you have been talking to me about a lot lately with respect to the law firm strategy, your own strategy for Weber marketing is the concept of more, better, new. Mm -hmm. um, simple words mm -hmm. that pack a punch. What does that mean for the people listening? Yeah. So I, I don't like to take a, I, I didn't make this up myself. I, I think Alex Hermosi uses this exact phrase. This is what I've done, but he so eloquently put the framework for me to be like, oh yeah, this is easier for me to explain it this way. This is just how I've always done it. Um, but generally when people are going into the next year and they're planning and they're trying to figure out what they should do within their business, um, my answer is what is currently working for you? Well, how are you getting new business? How's your business working? What, what are the things that are currently good? If it's good and it's working, can you just do more of that? Like don't focus anywhere else. Can you just do more of that? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yes, then just do more and you're probably going to be in really good shape. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, I can't do more. I'm already doing the maximum output of that. Then my next question goes to, can you just do it better? Maybe you're not being the most efficient at it. Maybe you don't have the best strategy. Quality um, might not quality, be. Quality, yeah. Whatever it is to make it better. And if the answer is, no, I can't make it better, it's the best that I can possibly do, then I move to, okay, what's the new idea that you can can do? And a lot of people do it backwards. They go into the business and they're like, well, what's the new strategy I can go into? And I'm like, well, don't do a new strategy. Mm -hmm. You've got a huge learning curve. You don't know if it's going to work. All of these factors that are going against you. So why are you focused on the new thing when you can just say, oh, yeah, real estate agents specifically, like most of my business comes from referrals. Ninety plus percent of my business comes from referrals. Great. Can you just get more referrals? Yeah. What are you currently doing to get referrals? And if you're not doing everything in your day for doing referral generation, then just do more referral generation. You're probably going to double your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and most often people see like the shiny new object or, you know, the TikTok, the reels, social media is a big one, mm -hmm. video. And it's probably strange for people to hear you say, why do you want to do video? Because mm -hmm. they associate you with video so strongly. Mm -hmm. They're like, why would you do all of that effort and expense to do video when you have a strategy that works and you just need to double down on it? 
Well, I mean, that's why I created a video business because everyone just wants the cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, do I think it's the most effective thing? No, but it is something that people want. And if somebody wants mm -hmm. to pay money for it, then I want to give them the best outcome that they can possibly get for it. So here is my video company. Yeah. Um, however, my clients that do consulting with me or, or the businesses I do, the actual marketing I kind of do, uh, I've got kind of three components of what I do. It's it's the mark the video marketing where we create videos and advertising for people, brand videos, profile videos, all that fun stuff. Um, or we'll do like full scale marketing, like we are your fractional marketing team where you don't have to hire internally, it's hired out to me and we do the entire marketing plan. Mm -hmm. um, or I do one on one consulting where I try and help steer somebody's ship or, or let them steer their ship and, and yeah. just give them some some good feedback. So the people that I talk to in that aspect is generally like, well, great. <laughs> What are we currently doing that works? Mm -hmm. And if we can just maximize that, then let's just focus on that because there's no point in wasting your time and efforts and resources trying to figure out if something else is going to yeah, be effective. Yeah, there's a lot of smart people in business that talk about how um, if you leverage your strengths or continue working your strengths, your outcome will be far better than if you just start focusing on improving your weaknesses. Uh, and this is kind of, I mean, it's what you're saying. But in a marketing context yeah. of, you know, like if you want to be an Olympian and you're already like nearly an Olympic caliber runner, are you better off pushing that and becoming an Olympic caliber runner? Or should you start learning how to do javelin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tiff, where are we at right now? Ryan, as you know, we are at the law firm. Oh, and what is it that we do here? You're being kind of weird. At Thomas and Weber, we close real estate transactions. Mm. Our... Are you trying to do an ad? Right I now? would never do that. You know, just hear me out though. Like if somebody were just wondering like, well, why is Thomas and Weber maybe a, a good law firm to do real estate closing? What would you tell them? Well, as the marketing professional for our firm, I think, you know, mm -hmm. that I would say we are easy to do business with. Mm -hmm. We provide lots of options mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to communicate with us in a secure way. Yeah, uh, We have some of the best paralegals in the state of well, North Carolina. I mean, they're all right. You're just saying that because they give you a hard time. Ah. Ah. Rightfully so. And considering you work with us every day, did, I mean, do we have enough time to go through everything? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd say that's good, but just hear me out. Curious. If somebody wanted to maybe close a house in North Carolina, submit their closing and possibly do that through our office, where would they send their, you know, offer to purchase? You're being so weird right now. You made up this email address. Mm hmm. And uh, it was a pretty good one. Quite catchy. Thank you. Close at thomasandweber.com. Ooh, that is good. I forgot about that one. Um, sure you did. <laughs> hmm. So just, you know, let's just throw it all out there in case they want to make a phone call and say, mm -hmm. you know, I want to I want to close at the office and I, I like calling and talking to somebody. What number would they dial? Well, for the sake of this not ad read, hmm. um, I will share that our phone number is 704-663-1600. Oh, interesting. I really appreciate that, Tiff. Well, you guys heard it here. Back to the podcast. We get it all the time with social media, especially real estate agents, for some reason, are, are big time into like, well, I want to use social media. I want to use video. So-and-so consulting group, so-and-so coaching, so-and-so agent uses this and they get leads from it. I'm like, cool. They also may be spending ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars and having somebody mm -hmm. produce and manage all of this for you. Yeah. So I mean, they if don't you have think, to about, think about it. like the law firm, one, you run it all for us. It's not me coming up with all of this stuff. Like, yeah, I, I do the legal stuff and you don't. But as far as having all of this equipment, having all of the strategy, all of the editing, everything, you do all of that. Yeah. And I just have to show up and you know, like people see the end product and they think mm -hmm. that's all it is. And they're like, Oh, Tiff, you're so great on camera. You're so great. Your videos are awesome. And you're like, I, I just show up and talk. Yeah. And, and also, most of the time you've given five me five years of this yeah. too. You know, like people look at this and they're like, yeah, you guys do so great. Five years. Yeah. This is not, um, you know, there's the immediate gratification that people want that they come to you and they say, I want to do video. Yeah. And if they do one video and they don't get 
a hundred clients from it, they're like, video doesn't work. Right. So there's, that's another aspect that you have to teach people about all the time. Yeah. And that's on the organic side. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, if I just post a video on social media, it's going to be seen and viewed and I'm going to get business from it. And it's like, no, it's so unlikely that that happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned it in a, a podcast that we did or me and you just talking, but you know, we have 2000 plus followers on our Instagram, which is not many, but it's mm-hmm. more than what most individual real estate professionals have. Mm-hmm. When we post something in our story, when, and we're followed a lot, like we mm-hmm. are, we are highly engaged with, if we post something on our story, we get between 70 to a hundred people to view that within the 24 hour window that the story goes away on Instagram. Just really not, that's no, not a lot. That's hardly any of 2000 plus people that follow us. Mm-hmm. And so People are thinking like, well, why doesn't this work for me? Because not many people see it. Mm-hmm. That's why you can post the same thing multiple times over, you know, a six month span. You could post the same thing four or five mm-hmm. times and it's the one, someone might only see it once. Yeah. I want to bring this back to what you were saying about referrals is, okay, we go through this effort to do social media, only 70 to 100 people see it. Mm-hmm. How much more meaningful would it be if you just directly reached out to 70 to 100 people in your network? Mm-hmm. You know, like that's not something they're just swiping on. This is a, an intentional reach out. And you, I didn't think of this, but you said it the other day and I'm, I'm reminded of it, of just sending that text to someone saying, Hey, I saw your son won his wrestling tournament. Congratulations. Or whatever it may be. Like you're following these people, you keep up with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, continuing to reach out to the network rather than just posting a, well, and if that's your bread and butter. And let's say you don't have a team and you're trying to do this all yourself. You're going to take the time to come up with your topic. You're going to take your time to record your video or create your content. It doesn't have to be video, Mm -hmm. but that's probably going to take 30 minutes for planning Mm -hmm. one hour for recording. If you are doing some sort of editing, that's if you're confident, that's if you're good. Yeah. If you're not overthinking, you probably get another (laughs) one hour Plus, depending on how in-depth of an edit you're doing on that. And then you're hoping that, what is that for us? 5% of our people see it. Mm -hmm. You're hoping that 5% see it for all that work and effort. Mm -hmm. So in three plus hours, you're like, okay, my 1,000 followers, five to 50 people are going to see it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why? Why? Yeah. In three plus hours, you could have texted 50 individual people and made their day. Yeah. And you're probably like people listening are like, well, why doesn't the law firm do that? Because we've got all kinds of crazy rules we have to follow. A lot of this can't work like right. just because of our rules. But we know that agents can do this. Yeah. And I mean, yes, we do do social media, but we also invest a lot of money into it. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I don't charge <laughs> what I normally charge. I get the family discount. You is. get the family discount, but like we also have multiple other people that help us with this. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just a team or it's not just an individual person. It's a whole team managing this social media to make it meaningful. And, you know, looking back, does it matter? Like sometimes, mm-hmm. but do we really get like business because of it? hard to track. Yes. And if you want to be able to track, um, how many closings did I get from this video? You're going to need a way bigger team, way more metrics, way more. We will, we'll never know. And also if I had to do every step of this by myself, I wouldn't do it. Which is where most people (laughs) are when they're like, Ryan, what should I do? I'm like, well, save up until you can hire somebody. Yeah. That's where you're at. Because you're not going to do this. Unless you have the fire and you just really care about video. Otherwise, do something that you're already good at that works for you. Yeah. And I I think a big component to this is like, I'm not bashing social media. I think it is effective. We use it daily. We use it daily. For our business. (laughs) But when you're talking about maximizing your potential, I mean, just thinking about us, like if we would spend the three hours of that to send a hundred text messages, which, you know rules around Mm -hmm. what we can do. But like, if we did that, it would be far more impactful Mm -hmm. and we can track it. Or I take those three hours and go do three seminars. Yeah. You know, those are, and that's why you have to think like you were saying earlier, okay, well, what do I do to get referrals? What do I do to, uh, like, how am I getting my business right now? And some, there might be agents that don't even know for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's, they haven't tracked it. Right. Uh, So there's probably step one. Right. Let's figure out how you're getting your business. Yeah. 
And then, I mean, from there, it's kind of reverse engineering. Like, what are you trying to do? Like, let's let's throw a, a simple number on it and say $10 million in, in sales. Mm-hmm. You know, most of you guys would be like, oh, my gosh, that'd be a, a great life. Well, you know, generally 3% commission. You know, usually it's about 2.5 when it's all averaged out by the end of the year of what a, a, a realtor's commission bring home was. So, oh, it'd be less than that bring home, but yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. after all the transactions and all that, it, it generally averages out to about 2.5%. So what is that? Uh, off of 10 million, is that 250,000? Sure. It sounds right. I think that's right. I just yeah. You know, don't want to do math in my head right yeah, now. I'm pretty sure that's 250,000. Okay. That's saying your firm also doesn't take anything. So now you've got generally 70 to 80% of your commissions is what you actually get because the other, you know, you got to pay in your, your mm-hmm. commissions to your firm and, and your so, taxes and then your taxes. And so like, okay, doing 10 million in sales, you're probably going to bring home a hundred to $125,000. Great. If that's what you're looking to do and that's your goal is 10 million, let's start reverse engineering. How can we get to that 10 million? Mm-hmm. What's your average sales price? 500,000. Okay. So for you to get 10 million, we need to sell 20 houses. So, how do we get 20 houses sold or bought? Well, we need to talk to at least 20 people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you need to start figuring out how many times do you get business from referrals? How many outreaches can you do? So every mm-hmm. time I send uh, 15 text messages, I get one referral after that. Mm-hmm. Great. You know what you should do? <laughs> send 150 <laughs> yeah. or 300 yeah. text messages. <laughs> and, and there it is. Yeah. You know, and you'll start seeing the numbers, but you've got to track it. And so once you start tracking it, you can reverse engineer it and you can basically calculate the business that you're trying to create. Yeah. And that's generally where I go with business planning if you're not doing any of that. Mm -hmm. I have a question about referrals for you. Um, You know, a lot of agents work heavily on referrals. (laughs) What happens when you get start getting referrals from clients that you don't like? I mean, everybody's got clients that they didn't like working with. You're no exception. I'm no exception. There's people that we just didn't like doing business with. And if given the choice, we're not going to do it again. And, you know, the pumpkin plan by Mike McCall, it's all that. That's what I was you know, going to bring up. Like the figuring out who is your ideal client. Um, and I'll let you talk about the pumpkin plan. But I know agents that are like, I'm getting plenty of referrals, but it's all the same kind of people that I don't like working with. You know, it's like the... Um, like super high maintenance or like illogical or unreasonable or whatever it may be. And when they're trying to attract the ones who like, they know what they want, they're reasonable in negotiations, all of that kind of stuff. And they just keep getting like the high conflict people. So what do you do to try to change that? Well, I mean, you got to be really clear. You mm-hmm. can be clear on what you do want and what you don't do. Mm-hmm. And most agents will say, if you're looking to buy or sell a house in this year or this month or thinking about it, reach out to me. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just saying everybody. So if yeah. you don't want certain people, you need to say who I don't work with, mm-hmm. who I do work with, and let your referral partners know the yep. people that refer you business. But the the easiest way to figure out who is my best, you take out a sheet of paper, put a line down the middle on the left side, write down your top 10 favorite clients that you've ever worked with, just made you super happy. You want all of them because you thoroughly enjoyed it. On the right side, you write down your top 10 clients that you've made the most money from. Mm -hmm. There will be overlap. Circle the ones that overlap and then start chotting down what is the things that are the commonalities. Maybe all of them are um, uh, empty nesters and their kids went off to college and now they're downsizing from maybe the point where they had a 6,000 square foot house on the water with a pool and all that. And they're like, you know, I just want a a 2,500 square foot ranch now. Mm -hmm. But they've got the money, mm-hmm. so it's going to be a very nice house, and they probably know what they want. Probably yeah. going to be easy transaction. Um, it could be the opposite. It could be, hey, we're, we're we were uh, new parents, new parent. You know, we we had a house, we had our first house, we've been growing, it, we've got great incomes, we're both working, and now we're having our first child, and we need more space. That might be the com- and there might be more common. It might mm-hmm. be. Oh, it's over here on, uh, you know, Brawley School Road. They all yeah. lived over there. 
they're all in racing. I've got some people that mm -hmm. I know that almost all their clients are in racing. Yep. You know, like so figure out all of those commonalities. And now that's what you're talking to mm -hmm. because you want more of that. If you don't want more of the people that pay you the most money and also you enjoy working with, then you probably should reconsider what you're doing in business. Yeah. Um, and then there's also times where you got to, you take whatever client you can get. Understand that. If, you, but if, if you're, you're hurting at, for money, you take what you can yeah, get. Yeah. But this is when you're at a phase of your business where you, it, it's, you, it's time to enjoy it too. Well, and also, you know, that, that, that's how you do your messaging. Mm -hmm. You're still going to get other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get people all the time that are asking me about photos and this. I don't share any of that, mm -mm. but they'll still contact me about it. You get people that call for personal injury for, uh, you name it in yep. law and they'll call the office asking, I want to speak to the attorney because I got injured at work. I, we don't, we've never talked about that no. ever, No. but they're like, Oh, that's a lawyer. That's who I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they've followed something on social media and see the name Thomas mm -hmm. and Weber. Like, oh, yeah, I've got to reach out to Thomas and Weber. That's the attorney in the area. So yeah. you're still going to get other people reaching out to you, but you're you're going to be attracting more so the people that you're specifically mm -hmm. speaking to, which is one of the most important things that you do is be really, really clear in your messaging. Yeah, I'll tell you just from personal experience, if I see a post that says if you're looking to buy or sell, call me compared to seeing... Um, do you need more space because you just had your first child and the walls are closing in? Well, I'm going to help you find, you know, like the talking to me, yeah. that gets my attention. That's me that you're talking about. Right. Um, if I'm looking to buy or sell, like, meh, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But yeah. if you start talking specifically to me, oh, did your kids just move off to college and now you want to, you know, not have as much space? That gets attention too. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's like you said, clarity and messaging, it, you start getting more of the people that you actually like working with. Why would you not try it? Exactly. Yeah. I think another, another big thing within marketing that I thoroughly believe is, um, important and how we've grown the law firm and I've kind of grown all of my stuff that I've done is, is being different. Mm -hmm. So most people I am the opposite of this, but most people dive into researching their competitors. Mm -hmm. They want to see, and it frustrates them. It gets them fired up. It's like, oh, you know, I'm not doing good enough. But they'll fo they'll they'll focus on their competitors. Mm -hmm. They'll say, this person's doing that, but this person's doing this, so I should do that. I should do like I can't let them get ahead of me. And I'm like, stop focusing on them. Like I don't care. I don't even know to be honest. Like. We know about one or two law firms in the area that that do real estate transaction, but I don't actually know too many of them because I don't know what they do. I don't yeah. focus on them. I don't We're care not what they do. Playing their game. <laughs> so you know, like I, I don't even know who our competition is. I don't know who's doing yeah. good or bad. It's like yeah. well, I'm just going to keep doing our thing. And to clarify, you don't mean that in the sense that we don't have competition. It's that. We're not focused on them. Yeah. And and the reasoning behind this is if I'm taking all this time and effort of focusing on them. How can I make myself better? Mm -hmm. And then the second part to that is if I'm taking all this time and effort to focus on them and seeing what they're doing and wanting to replicate that, how am I going to stand out? We're all the same. Mm -hmm. And then it's a race to the bottom where people are just trying to shop you out for, for t basically yeah. money. I mean, if you're in a large corporation where there's all sorts of resources allocated to competitive analysis, sure. But in a small business, which is what a real estate professional is running, a small mm -hmm. business, all those minutes that you spend with your eyes on the competitor is time you're not spending on your own business. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you hit the nail on, on the head of, you know, why focus on what they're doing, focus on what you're doing and what you need and what you want. Yeah. And that's like, you know, that's a huge uh, thing that we focus on in our marketing at the law firm is we want to stand out and be different. And we want, what you've traditionally seen from law firms and lawyers, we're going to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. When they zig, we zag. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want to do, we'll never have a billboard unless it's a ridiculous billboard. Yes. <laughs> like when, when people shaking their heads when they drive by, like, I can't believe they did yeah. this. <laughs> like we're not going to have hurt bad call Chad. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're going to have 
you know, stuff that's completely, it's just why we got into social media because mm-hmm. no lawyers were on social media. And to be honest, there's very few still on, not on there. Or yeah. There's very there's few on there now. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And it kind of comes back to what you're saying earlier about how, you know, it's the, if you're buying or selling, call me. It, similar things of anytime something interesting gets shared on social media, we see every agent share like the exact same. Mm-hmm. They're just sharing the same thing from Dave Ramsey or whoever it may be, you know, talking about rates, talking about the housing market. Um, you know, there's no rule against taking that data, crediting it to where you got the source, but putting it in your own graphic, in your own brand colors, talking about it, you know, doing a selfie video saying, I just read this from Dave Ramsey or whoever. And he said, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's at a certain point when you see the same graphic from the same source over and over and over from every agent, you know, like at this point, I can't even keep track of, are they on the same team? Or it's like, <laughs> I mean, there was one going around when, you know, the fed announced that they are going to drop rates five times. And there was mm-hmm. one graphic made, I don't know who made it. And it was shared that we saw no less than 40 or 50 times from agents. Yeah. But that's exactly the one I'm thinking of. Too. I don't know which agent shared it. No. Because it they all, all just merged into my head. So w- w- there's nothing standing out for any of these agents that spent the time to share it. Mm-hmm. And it's valuable information. I, I took in the information, but I have no idea where I got it from because everybody was posting it the exact same way. Right. Like a breakdown of, hey, this is what this means. Mm-hmm. You know, someone, you know, even just sitting, you know, parked in their car telling me about it or a graphic with that agent's or, you know, like that firm's colors or just a different way to look at it that's not what everybody else is posting. I I would have probably been able to say, oh, well, so-and-so shared that. Mm-hmm. And they shared this really helpful post and I learned something from it. But now I'm like, yeah, a bunch of people shared it, but I don't know who. <laughs> yeah. I think another another point of going into, you know, 2024 and planning and marketing and that kind of stuff, you know, obviously everyone's kind of leaned into digital. Mm-hmm. You know, they're... they're most people say digital is the same thing as social media, which it's completely not. But um, no. most social people, media is is a, encompassed by digital. Right, digital is just in the internet. Yeah, um, and that's what a lot of people focus and think about. You know, they, what about my website? What about my social media? What about um, paid ads? What about you know my videos? All of this stuff, and it's mm-hmm. like, hold on, guys, there are businesses out here in Lake Norman doing multiple million dollars a year that don't have a social media. Mm -hmm. They might not even have a website. And if they do, it's the most simple mm -hmm. thing. And they're still marketing. Yeah. So don't forget some of the tried and true methods that work for Mm -hmm. marketing a business. Like I'll tell you right now, like cold calling still works Mm -hmm. very, very well. Cold door knocking cold yeah. emailing like it's not things you want to do yeah it's not glamorous but the thing is if you're hurting for business which a lot of realtors in 2023 were struggling mm-hmm. like looking for jobs you know getting out of the industry mm-hmm. so if you're hurting for business there's things to do you just might not enjoy it but yeah. what do you want to do do you want to run a business and make money or do you want to just enjoy your marketing and be like yeah i get to post tiktoks all day cool The people that post TikToks all day probably aren't making a bunch of money, Mm -hmm. but it's a very glamorous social media presence. Yeah. And I think one thing I was thinking earlier when you were talking about social media is that, um, you know, the influencers kind of set the tone for what people think they should be doing. And you have to remember that influencers are doing this to get views so they can be famous. They're not run almost always. They're not running a business that they're trying to drive traffic to what they're selling you is other companies Mm -hmm. things that they're getting kickbacks for or paid to post about, but the views are just for the sake of getting views. So, you know, you can't get hung up on that. People look at our, our YouTube channel. They're like, wow, that must be awesome. You guys are YouTubers. We, at the point of this releasing, it's probably going to be at 11,000 subscribers. We make $185 a month off of it from paid ads. La-di-da. (laughs) La-di-da. And we post a video every single day other than the weekends. Yep. Sometimes multiple videos in one day. Mm -hmm. And all of that got us $185 a month. Now, this is obviously not our business. We're not trying mm-hmm. to be YouTubers, so we don't care. Yeah. But um, it's the transparency of understanding like, oh, 
it took them five years and over a thousand videos to get to $185 a month. Mm -hmm. So you can't get <laughs> caught up in the views and the subscribers yes. and all of that. I mean, it, and, and while the, there might be other people making way more money than that yeah. and they claim to on social media, it might not be the case. Yeah. It's not the size of the audience. It's the engagement of the audience. If I have 500 followers that 400 of them are rabid fans and are always, you know, in the community, in the chat and the whatever talking, they're preaching about my brand to other people. I'd probably take that any day over a hundred thousand audience with a thousand people that I actually mean, pay attention. We have one video on Facebook reels that has over 800,000 views. You know how much business we got from that? Zero. <laughs> no. Every single video we have that's gone quote viral that's over 100,000 views, which, I mean, we've probably had 10 this year. Mm -hmm. Zero business came from that. Not a yeah. single dollar came in from over, I mean, millions of views on those videos. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, you're not saying this to say don't do it. It's to understand there's not going to be a way to equate posting a video to dollars in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So if you're hung up on, you know, posting the videos, I'm not getting enough views or I'm getting so many views, but I'm not getting any closings. What these videos do for us is establish credibility. Mm -hmm. It gives us an opportunity to help people without asking for anything up front first. Mm -hmm. So it builds trust and gets them to come in the door. Like, I think the point you, uh, you're making a lot of points, but one of them that's kind of like weaved between what you're saying is that, uh, know why you're doing it. Right. Yeah, you got to understand the the underlying root of what you're trying to accomplish. And if you think you're going to accomplish making sales because of posting to social media or, or creating videos or content, it's probably not going to be the case. Even mm -hmm. though you might hear a couple people say like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. probably not the case. And if you do, awesome. Yeah, but that shouldn't be the expectation. Mm -hmm. Now, the other aspect of that is if you're making videos that are specific to sales and then running ads and putting them in front of people, yes, there should probably be some sort of ROI component to that mm -hmm. return on investment. So if you're putting X dollars in, you should be receiving X dollars or, I mean, whatever it is that you're looking for out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's the other component, you know, like some people want to do the consistent posting on social media. Other people are really successful where they don't even have a social media presence, but they're just really good at paid ads. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different variations of this. If you're already doing, if you're, if you've already maxed out the things that got you to where you currently are. Mm -hmm. So like for us, we knew, we know the the most effective thing for the law firm is for you to get in front of real estate agents mm -hmm. physically in person so they can talk to you, feel comfortable and generally on their own turf. Yep. Which is why we've made the goal for you to do 52 in-person real estate seminars next year. Yeah. <laughs> info at thomasandweber.com. Close at Thomas and Weber. Or, or yeah, info at whatever. It'll You'll set it up with TIFF. But we know that's the most effective marketing for us mm -hmm. because realtors need to be able to see, feel, touch, mm -hmm. you know, you. Have a direct access. <laughs> Correct. And so instead of us saying like, well, you know, our social media is great. You know, we've got 11,000 YouTube subscribers. The the Instagram's growing. We've got five videos this year with over 100,000 views. We just go all in on that. And we're still not, we're still not going all in on no, that. No, so. because it's not the most effective mm -hmm. way. And we haven't, we, we can do more of the thing that's working. Mm -hmm. We could also do it better. Mm -hmm. So we, we tried the, the webinars. The webinars were really successful. We only did it once a quarter. We can do that more. Mm -hmm. Can we make the webinars better? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like we could do more graphics on the screen. We could do more engagement. We could have. Oh, know, see, I, w I thought you were going to say I could do better because mm. I think you're doing great. Like well, your part of it is awesome. <laughs> but there's things that. So both of us, we yeah. can do better. So like that's the the things that work aren't even capped out. I'm not even looking at new stuff. No, I don't. I, we don't I'm, need to. No, because we're not finished with the things that are working. And in fact, if you came to me tomorrow and said, I have this new thing I want to try, I'd be like, can we stay the course for just a little bit longer? Yeah. <laughs> and you're not one to like, yeah, you like fresh ideas. You research a lot. Um, it, you know, people don't give you enough credit. They just see some, a former college athlete and, you know, think very oh. former now, <laughs> they don't give you enough credit for like the 
intellectual capabilities you have. You're like, you're studying more than anybody that I know. Um, so even though you've always got new, fresh ideas, you have over time gotten really focused on this is our plan. We're going to see it through. We're going to give it the time that it needs to develop. And now you've hit on this. Okay, we're just going to keep doing more of that. This is working. So, you know, actionable thing, thing that worked really well for us this year. We said, what are the things that we can, we're currently doing? What are the measurables? And every Monday I'm going to update the measurables, whether it be the input or the result. That way I can track if more inputs happen, do I have more results? And mm-hmm. so it's just on a Google spreadsheet. But an example would be like um, podcast downloads. And I knew how many podcasts I posted. Mm-hmm. It could be files opened. Mm-hmm. And so like all of these factors and numbers I have on a spreadsheet, I've got maybe 15 numbers that I was tracking. Mm-hmm. And so that let me know. Hey, this month, or we we saw everything through for a quarter. This quarter, I actually want to double the podcast output. Does that result in more of the other things? Yeah. So I'm just tracking the output or, you know, the input, which is, you know, a podcast posted. Mm -hmm. So that's a way for you as real estate agents, like text messages to past clients. How many did you send this week? Every Monday, update that. Um, And then compare that to new leads. Yeah. Like how many leads did I get? So tracking both of the inputs and the outputs will allow Mm -hmm. you to see which one should I adjust or if I adjust. And you can go back throughout the whole year and say, wow, at the beginning, I was only sending um, 100 texts a week. Well, I started doing 100 texts a day. And in the second half of the year, I actually doubled my leads. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like you should be sending 100 messages a day. It is what it is. That's what I would be doing if I were in you guys' shoes. The other thing that you can see is kind of like the lag time of, all right, if I'm sending out my messages this week, it might not be till next week that I see the leads coming in. Um, Or maybe maybe you'll even see it within that same week. And so you'll know, okay, to set up my pipeline – I got to do this. How many open houses did I attend? How many handwritten cards did I do? How many gifts did I give to past clients? How many closing gifts did I give out? You know what? Mm -hmm. All of these things can be tracked Mm -hmm. and it could be part of your plan for 2024. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, going into this plan, come up with measurables so you can measure the input, which then shows you the results, measure your results, and Mm -hmm. then figure out your lag time, figure out your input as far as a amount goes to see, can you adjust to do more or better Mm -hmm. or new? Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time um, because you're one of the busiest people I know. (laughs) Um, I know that because I live with you. And even if you're not busy, you make yourself busy. I look busy at least. (laughs) You you definitely look busy to me. So if you're not, I'm learning something right now. Uh, But I think this is so helpful for the people that tune in, usually for law stuff, because it's, it's, you know, the law stuff is helpful and I'm glad that I get to talk to them about it, but this is the lifeblood of their business is mm. continuing to be able to get more clients and you'll never see me at a closing table if you don't have a thriving business. And that's where you, Ryan Weber, come in. I try to at least. So yeah. we'll do a couple calls to action here. We never do calls to action. So if you want Tiff to come to one of your um, meetings for a seminar, if you're in person, she'll obviously come. If you're mm-hmm. local within an hour, I think you yeah. drive an hour. I drive an hour for drive you. an hour. Yeah. But if you're further away and you're still in, uh, it doesn't even have to be North Carolina. If you're just, it a, does have to be North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Cause you can only yeah. do North Carolina. I'm only laws. licensed in North Carolina. So, so it, it does have to be, North you know, Carolina. if you're, let's say you're in, uh, you know, at the beach, you want Tiff to do a meeting, we can do it virtual. We yeah. do it all the time. Or if you're local and you want to come here. Or if you want to come here or our Huntersville office, we have space. Mm-hmm. Um, so the second call to action for our, uh, podcast if you would like to, I'm, I'm starting, I'm not starting, I've been doing it for a while, but I'm opening up my calendar for one-on-one consulting. Mm-hmm. Before I actually open it up, I do want to get some feedback from people. I want to um, kind of see how things are going and have some conversation. So if you want to do a free 30-minute call with me, you must have it recorded because I'm going to use it for social media <laughs> to mm-hmm. get um, some leads yeah. for my business. That's but, the only catch. Yeah, we it's the only record. catch. Um, and give me good feedback. But if you want to talk to me for 30 minutes about your marketing or business needs, I will certainly um, set up a time. So easiest way to get in contact with me, shoot me a DM at Ryan Weber Marketing on Instagram, and we'll mm-hmm. uh, I'll send you over the link to get that. Yeah, this is 
Interesting. We haven't, you're right. We never do calls we to action. We never do calls to action. Um, I get, people ask me about this for you a lot. And, you know, I'll, I'll ask you if you're interested. And usually it's like a time where you've got so many projects that like you can't open up your calendar. Um, but with you trying to change your focus a little bit, it's perfect timing. And all the people that I've told you, no, he's too busy before. This is your shot. <laughs> Shoot your shot, people. Shoot your shot. Well, thank you again. Um, appreciate you coming on your own podcast, The Real Estate Show, once again. Um, and I guess we'll catch you folks in the next episode.